Hotel Kitchen. So it is before work and I was requested to make a like a copycat double tree the chocolate walnut cookie and that was requested by a teammate of mine from work Vanessa so shout out to you. So I'm gonna get this going and there is a little secret that I have found that kind of makes it more of a double tree cookie. I've done some research so let's get this going because the batter does have to chill for quite some time. One of the secrets that I found in researching and in taste, take a half a cup of oatmeal and we're going to make oat flour. If you have oat flour, that's perfectly fine. I just have oatmeal because I don't ever use oat flour, so I'm just going to make it myself. It's more cost beneficial, so I'm going to grind this up until it becomes a flour. dry ingredients in this bowl first and we'll cream the sugar and the butter in this one. So first we're going to start off with two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour. We'll do the oat flour. And we're going to do one and a quarter teaspoon of baking soda. I love putting stuff in mason jars because it gives me, lets me hold many, well, much more of what I typically would have in there. Plus it's a wide mouth, so I can just put my spoons in. So we're gonna do one teaspoon of table salt. I mean one teaspoon, not tablespoon. Did I say a tablespoon? But anyways, it's one teaspoon of salt. Boy, it's gonna be a long day. So now we have a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. And now we're just gonna whisk this together to make sure that it's nice and fluffy and all incorporated before we add it to the butter and the sugar mix. All right, I love the smell of cinnamon, especially when you're baking. All right, so that's all set. I'm gonna keep this spoon in there because we're gonna gently put it in. So, <clears throat> before I do that though, We need three quarters of a cup of packed light brown sugar. We're also going to need three quarters of a cup of just regular granulated, granulated sugar. butter. I just had it on low, melted. And I'm going to start this while I pour in the butter. And you want to make sure it's unsalted. So we're going to mix that until it's incorporated. So you just want to cream. one egg at a time. You want to make sure it's room temperature because you were using hot butter. So it is warm. However, if you do one egg at a time, it will incorporate nicely. I'm just going to turn it up a little bit. You want to make sure that you don't see any more of the yolk before you add the next one. I'm going to add that in. While that's mixing, Actually, I'm going to shut that off because I don't want that to over mix. I'm going to add a half a tablespoon of vanilla extract and a, a half a teaspoon of lemon juice. All right, so I'm going to turn this back on. be 
walking across the street or bring their kids to the bus stop. That's why my dog is barking. So, why this is going, that is fully incorporated. So now I'm going to start adding in the flour mixture. I'm turn it down a little bit. You want to make sure that the flour is incorporated all, pretty much almost before you add the next scoop. But you also don't want to have it over mixed. If you don't have like a measuring cup like this, you can definitely use just a, just like a spoon, maybe not like a tablespoon, but like a spoon spoon. She's my alert dog, can't you tell? <laughs> All right, so now we're going to add in the last of the dry. Delilah Meg. So you don't want this over mixed, so now we're done. So we have to add the chocolate chips still and the walnuts. So I have one cup of chopped walnuts and I have three cups of chocolate chips. At least I hope so because it looks like the bag got broken into. But that's okay. But if you're doing this recipe, you really want three cups of chocolate chips. Usually when I make cookies, my husband is home, so I let him lick the batter. But since he's at work and I am going to be going to work, he's not here. So, one cup of chopped walnuts. Three cups of chocolate chips. And we're just going to fold this in. This is going to chill. You want it to chill. You can either form the balls onto two parchment lined cookie sheets. Form the balls. Make sure they're about one and a half inches apart. You want it to cool at least one to two hours, but it'd be more beneficial if you do it overnight. If you do form it in balls on the parchment paper and put them in the refrigerator, take them out, squish them flat with your palm, not super flat though, and make sure that the cookies after they're spread are one and a half inches apart. When you do that, you're gonna preheat the oven, while, you're, while you do that, preheat the oven to 350 degrees I am actually going to let this dough chill in the bowl and I'm just going to use a scooper and do everything right then and there. So I'm going to cover this up because I have more room in my refrigerator for this than baking sheets. This is going to get covered with saran wrap. I won't be out of work at least for 10 hours and by the time I cook dinner I can pop this in. This will be nice and chilled and then we'll continue. So you're going to see an outfit change by the time we start cooking these cookies. All right, told you, outfit change. So this has chilled. A lot. So now we're just gonna scoop these in just to balls. And then I will place them, probably two across, because I want them to be at least one and a half inches separated apart. This would be more beneficial if you scoop them on a tray, let them chill, then flatten them, because this dough does get pretty hard and it's only been about 13 hours. But the reason I did it this time in the bowl was because I didn't have any room in my fridge. So I'm gonna continue to get these balls out and put them onto the sheet tray. My oven is preheating to 350 degrees. So now that I have this first sheet tray done, I'm gonna pop them into the oven. They're gonna cook anywhere between five to eight minutes. It all depends on the size of your cookie. Oops. I'm gonna put it on the middle rack. And you still want that center to be soft. So while those cook, I'm gonna get the second sheet tray going. But I will have to say, it's actually easier just using 
just a spoon. And if you grab the amount that will make a golf ball size in your hand, is the perfect size cookie for this. So I'm just I'm just going until I'm done with the dough. So I can I have to wait for my other sheet pan sheet pan yeah sheet pan <clears throat> to come out of the oven. So I can pop these onto the parchment paper and give them a cook. So I'm almost done rolling out the balls and flattening them into cookies. So I'm gonna take out the first sheet tray of cookies because I put the second one in. So I'll make sure they're nice, light and golden brown. And to actually reverse the other sheet tray I put in, put that on top, put this one on the bottom. So if you don't have a super expensive oven, you have to rotate them in between a minute. So four minutes on the bottom rack, flip them to the top, flip the top ones down to the bottom. This took about eight minutes for these to cook. I'm gonna let these set for just a couple minutes and then I will put them on the cooling rack. But I am gonna take it off of the oven because the oven is warm. So I want these to cool and then we will transfer them. Let them cool just a little bit. These are the Double Tree Chocolate Walnut Cookies and you do want to eat these semi-warm and they are delicious. It will make you want to travel to a Double Tree Hotel. So I wanna show you what the best part of these Double Tree Chocolate Walnut Cookies are. And I know why I was requested to, to give this recipe. So it's a little warm, tell the bottom, it's soft in the center, that's what you want. So when you break it open, yum, let's give it a taste. That is really good. So, I would recommend if you wanna make a double batch of this dough, you certainly can. And if you do that, I would recommend, before you put it in the fridge, take saran wrap, roll it into a log. Make sure you secure the sides. And you actually put the dough in the freezer. So if you want to cook them, you can have perfectly round cookies. You just slice them with a knife, pull the dough out, slice it, put it on the sheet tray, turn the oven on to 350. By the time it reaches proper temperature, pop the cookies in, you can cook them. These are delicious. That oat flour definitely is that little back note taste that I usually can get from a double tree cookie. So let me know how you guys enjoy this recipe. Let me know what you have found that you think works better. I'd love to hear suggestions. So let me know how you guys like it and have a good night. Bye guys.